Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I am Spider Nico 6 and today we are going to be reviewing the latest Netflix film, El Conde. Now this movie didn't really get a lot of attention. I know it got some talk about, like, talk about it at the film festivals and people were giving it some acclaim, but I didn't see anything that was like zone of interest or anatomy of the fall level, like uh, quality reviews. But what is this movie about? El Conde reimagines Chilean dictator Augusto Pinochet as a 250-year-old vampire and centers around him as he is ready to face death. Now, the concept here sounds intriguing, like a vampire that is wanting to die. That sounds like it can lead to something interesting. And when you attach a director like Pablo Lorraine, whose last movie was Spencer, which, while well, I didn't find it the most entertaining movie, I thought it was extremely well made, and I overall enjoyed the movie. So attaching him to this project just sounds something that can create an interesting blend. And while I don't know about his other stuff outside of, like, Spencer, and then I know he made the Jackie Kennedy biopic with Natalie Portman, Spencer has this really royal feeling, and just, like, a feel of royalty, and where it doesn't really have an eerie horror feeling. While it does have intense moments, nothing like this one does. So it veers in a completely different direction from Spencer, and he was able to pull this off. And what he's able to do here is a very different, unique, eerie style that I really don't think we have seen much of recently. Like, I haven't seen a lot of the A24 horror movies, so I know like Robert Eggers, Ari Aster have probably done this, but like outside of them, I really don't know if we've had a horror movie like this as of late, or a lot of them like this. Where something that I, when I was watching this that came to mind was something like Werewolf by Night, where it was like a black and white horror movie, TV special, whatever you want to call it. But while that was definitely more of like a Universal Monsters tribute, like this movie right here, it was something like that. Well, this movie was definitely more of like, we're going to stay kind of old fashioned in terms of how we're crafting this thing, but it's still going to stay modern and create our own identity. So what he was able to do here was just create an artsy, like an art house, eerie, scary, creepy atmosphere that just like was elevated by that desolate era area that they're all in, and then the world that Lorraine is able to create here. And another part of this atmosphere that he's able to create is especially seen when all the vampires are flying in the air, and those scenes are extremely cool and shot really well by Edward Lockman, whose cinematography was absolutely phenomenal. Like, so many of these shots I could just frame on my wall. This movie looks phenomenal. And I'm going to say it, it is September. We still have three more months of the year to go. But I am probably going to like hope for this to get an Oscar nomination in cinematography. It just looks that good. And while occasionally I felt like it could look a bit grainy, like there were some shots that had a little bit too much grain in them, but overall, it just looks so good. And what about the story? Like, you have a vampire, you have a concept of him wanting to die. You gotta have a good story to go with this and very good execution. And what Lorraine writes here is an allegory for Augusto uh, Pinochet. And I don't know anything <laughs> about him or anything about uh, Chile's history. For, so as someone going in blind to the country's history... I thought the allegory was written pretty well. It was, like, clever. So I thought, okay, this is pretty interesting with what they're doing, and I could, like, pick up on a few things on the real person and then the vampire and, like, how they were, like, comparing the two and how uh, the allegory was working. I thought that was pretty clever with how he was able to write that. And the movie opens up with a very, very dark, intense, and extremely gory 15 minutes where, like, he's ripping out hearts, just, there's blood everywhere, to the point where, at times, I was like, yeah, okay, this is, this is a lot. But at other times, they were trying to make it funny, which I don't think worked all the time. Like, there's some points in the movie where I feel like the dark humor is able to work, but for the most part, I feel like the humor kind of falls flat. That's just personally. But after this opening 15 minutes, we're finally able to settle in on all of our characters and then uh, the family coming in. But one thing that really stays through the whole movie is the narration. Like the first 15 minutes is just constant narration. And I think it can sometimes work in movies, but for the most part, I'm not big on it. But this movie was just relying way 
way too much on it. And it was like the movie just kind of needed it because I feel like in the second act, they're starting to talk to each family member about uh, Pinochet's like dealings and like money laundering or like people he's killed. They're starting to talk about all of this and it just starts to get a bit tedious and I started getting lost in all of it where it's like they were doing so much. They were saying a lot, throwing us a lot of stuff, building all these characters. It was like they were trying to fit so much in that second act where it started getting repetitive. It started getting tedious, and I just like, was starting to lose track of everything. And it felt like the narration was there to try to keep you engaged, keep you like understanding what's going on. But the narration didn't always work in that area, so it just created like a very tedious, slow middle that I feel like could have been done a bit better. And while that second act, the middle, is a bit slow, I feel like the rest of the movie was paced pretty okay. But I enjoyed the first and third acts. I thought those moved pretty quick. So while I expected kind of a slow burn, obviously there's moments where it is slow. But overall, I thought it went by decently fast. And... A problem I do have, though, is even though I was entertained throughout the movie, like, I found the movie entertaining, the action and, like, the violence, while a bit too much at times, I found them just the movie to be, like, a fun watch. I love the atmosphere. So it was entertaining. But when the movie finished, I really just wasn't sure what to think or, like, what I was supposed to take in. Because, like, the story wraps up with, like, how they wrap up the family and stuff. But they do something really weird with the end, and then it starts getting kind of confusing with the lore of, like, his family and stuff. But then does something, like, really quirky and weird, and it completely shifts, sort of. And it's like, okay. And then it ends, and I feel like I, I, feel like I may have missed something in there. And when we come to the acting, I thought it was good. And there were some solid performances here and there, but... Overall, I don't really think there were any standout performances in this, like a Spencer, where Kristen Stewart was absolutely phenomenal and deserved the Oscar nomination. Here, everyone was solid. No one stood out. But even through all of this, as I said, I was entertained in this movie. And even when there was a scene I wasn't completely locked into, the cinematography just comes in and completely salvages that. It is just so good that I was able to just completely come in and just take in all of these amazing shots that are just phenomenal and like i said i can just frame them on my wall they look that good and then the black and white just adds to all of that i love that choice and before i give you my final score what did you guys think of el conde are you going to check this movie out make sure to like the video subscribe and comment below what were your thoughts on El Conde? What do you think of other Pablo Lorraine films? So yeah, while El Conde could be a bit confusing and tedious, it left me feeling mixed on what to take. It's still an entertaining film with a very unique style that I want to see more of in the future, not just from Pablo Lorraine, but from other filmmakers. It has excellent cinematography that I would definitely put in for a possible Oscar nomination. So my score, I am going to give it a 68%, which will equivalent to a 3.5 out of 5. So once again, thank you all for watching this review. I would check this movie out if you want to. If you're bored this weekend and you're not going to see Haunting in Venice or uh, watching Peter Camp on Hulu, El Conde is there. If you're into like an art house horror movie, I'd say it's worth it. So yeah, thank you all for watching and goodbye.